Bad news is good news, and bad news is everywhere. Shalom and welcome to Crosstalk. My name is Randy Weiss. I'm a Jewish believer in a Jewish Messiah, and I think many things point to his soon return. Now, I'm going to warn you up front that I'm going to label all the bad news out there is good news. To me, that seems fair. The media turns many things upside down, inside out, and right side wrong. So I believe I can do that too. And before we're done here, I think you may agree that I'm right and they are wrong. And by the way, that'll make you right too. After all, the media seems incapable of distinguishing between boys and girls or good and evil. Certainly, they don't know how to tell the difference between truth and lies. I want to turn the tables on labels. Therefore, I must call the bad news good news. You see, with, within each new catastrophe that's reported, well, I think there could be a silver lining. Now, you may ask, what good can come out of the world's chaos? I believe a tremendous hope can be found in the mess that is reported as news. The unimaginable fear exploding across the Middle East casts a plague of uncertainty across the globe. The enemies of Israel and the forces that hate our God disperse the seeds of desperation capable of birthing a deep hunger for God among millions of people who will soon recognize their urgent need for His help, for His protection, and for His love. But this hunger for God will come at a high cost. Soon, their misplaced faith will fail them because it is rooted in a bogus belief system. They have trusted in lies, and religious shams. Such foolish belief systems will drag them down. In my narrow view, any religion that promotes an unholy conflict with the true gospel of Jesus Christ, well, it's, it's a false religion. Now, that doesn't mean I hate the people who follow false religions. That, that's simply not the case at all. And it doesn't mean that the people who follow false religions are bad people. It simply means that I choose to follow a simple religious system that limits who and how I worship. And what I do must conform to the simple limits placed on me by that simple religious system. Now, much of the world sees things very differently. That's okay. I believe much of the world is about to be shaken. Ha! And that's the good news. You see what I mean? The bad news is good news. God will soon shake our world more severely than it has ever been shaken. Those who are prepared will be able to offer hope to the hopeless. The true church of Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, that true church will participate in a mighty outpouring of soul-saving conviction. The fear of God will be made real to many people in these last days. There will be a great harvest born in the fields of struggle. Believers who are prepared, well, they're going to be mightily used by God to win the lost. Great faithfulness will bring great fruitfulness. It'll do it here. And let me tell you, there's going to be even greater rewards in heaven. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Those are the words of the Hebrew prophet Daniel. Good news can come from all the bad news floating around. I also have more bad news that is good news. If there is sin in your life, buddy, it's going to kill you if you fail to remove it. The good news is that God will help you turn from that which displeases Him. If you walk in a weak faith, 
Well, you don't have to stay there. It's time to get your faith supercharged. God will fill you with His Holy Spirit and lead you in a bold faith that will gloriously reveal your calling for these times. Don't be left out of the harvest. Don't disqualify yourself through a wrong connection to this fallen world. Whatever you do, don't live in allegiance to Babylon if your citizenship has been declared in the kingdom of God. Don't fall for something temporary when you can be assured of the eternal. Now is the time to plant the stakes of your faith deep in the bedrock of truth. Now is the time to build every area of your life and family on the foundational realities of the Bible. Bad news can be your motivation to spread the good news, the gospel. But I also have real bad news. Folks, uh, many people are going to be torn loose from the moorings of their faith because their heart is linked to something less than the unchanging Word of God. More bad news. The opinions of man will fail. And let me tell you, there's crazy opinions everywhere you go. This is not a crazy opinion. What I'm telling you is the truth. And this is great good news. The eternal light of God's Spirit will guide us if we ask Him for help. Death, destruction, hatred, terrorism, and darkness. We all know it fills the headlines from the Middle East to the perverted West, from the violent North to the corrupt South. Bad news is trumpeted from every media platform. This becomes today's ticket to invite the hopeless to a hopeful tomorrow. Jesus loves them and He calls us to enjoy His rest, His peace, and His coming kingdom. Yes, I know. Hateful darkness is overtaking this world. Good news! We do not fear the darkness. We invade the darkness with God's love and His light. But our form of invasion is peaceful. Nobody gets hurt. Well, the emotionally stunted, perpetually pampered, intractably entitled children of social media, well, they may have their feelings hurt because we genuinely disagree with them, and some people just can't handle that. But nobody should be hurt because of disagreement. Good news! Even that bad news may cause those deceived, immature children to eventually grow up, because even they are beginning to see that life is serious. The bad news and chaos they see is really happening to real people. It's not just an academic exercise anymore. The good news is that no matter how dark things get, keep your eye on the light and God's glory will shine and provide safe passage wherever the Lord leads you. Like the psalmist shared, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A great Bible teacher I knew counseled me during a particularly dark time in my life. He told me that when things are darkest, look for that glimmer of light, then follow it. Do what you know is right and believe that God will make a way. I have reflected on that advice many times over the years. The heart of this message is a shout out to anyone who will listen and call to invest quality time every day in your own study of the Bible. That is my call to you. That is God's call to us. Meditate on God's Word because you will need His Word in the days to come more than ever before. Don't, don't be deceived. We have His assurance that He will use His Word to keep us in His will. God made clear through the writer of Proverbs, I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, 
and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. My friend was right. When it is darkest, go for the light. Darkness is coming. Many will tell you it's already here. Ask the victims of terrorism, despotism, communism, or racism. It is here. It is unavoidable. This world must be judged. The blood of the innocent cries out to God. Their silent screams and their prayers to be spared from terror will not be ignored. Too many murder for convenience, plunder for power, and compromise with hell only to bring its influence into our homes to rob us of heaven. You need to know that darkness is not just limited to the battlefields. What do you think? I mean, is God pleased with His creation? Will the Father allow it to continue like it is without reprisal? Many have rightly suggested that if God does not judge our modern societies, He needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, in fact, He won't apologize to them or to us. The sins of our culture and those of the world knows no limit. However, our God has made His limits clear. The nations have exceeded them. Society exists on borrowed time. I don't want to sound like a Jeremiah. I don't want anyone to think that I have some hidden knowledge about a specific catastrophic event that has only been revealed to me. No. I'm just a Jewish guy who reads his Bible and believes that Jesus is the Messiah. And from what I read, Everything that I have declared in this message is simply reiterating what God has already told us. The mission of Today with God is to spread the gospel around the world. Thousands of lives have already been touched by the love of Jesus through this Bible video project. But so many more need to see, hear, and understand the love of God. And that is why we translated this project into the top 11 languages of India. Countless of millions of more souls now have access to these Bible films in their native tongue. But we need God's help and your help. That comes through prayer. Will you join us on this humbling journey and pray that we can complete this enormous task? Our team is in India where over 100 pastors have been trained to distribute the Today With God project to the nation but hundreds more and even thousands more need the training and the tools to go forward. We need God and we need your prayers. Now more than ever, the Word of God must be seen. That is why Today with God exists in the native languages of the nation of India. Most importantly, that is why we are excited to announce the launch of our Today with God mobile app. It's coming soon and we want to bring it to your language. Scan the QR code to let us know you're praying with us, and we'll bless you with a free gift to show our gratitude. We thank you in advance for your prayers. We live in a time of clear and present danger. Yet many in the church act as though the idea of judgment, chastisement, correction, and holy scourging comes from a book of myths or 
Somehow it's reserved for only really bad people. In other words, people worse than us. Please, don't be deceived. To those souls who misunderstand the purpose of the Bible and the connection that we're supposed to have with God, you need to know that the Bible is more than a manual of spiritual strategies to satisfy your greed or to train God to help you control your circumstances. You, you, you can't look at this like methodologies to, well, you declare the name of God and in that way you obtain the things that you want to consume on your own lusts. Let me say it more plainly. A name it and claim it approach to making your demands known to God is foolishness. God's not, he's not a trained monkey that will do the things you want him to do because you've got the right formula. God is love and God is sovereign. I realize that many people have seen such spiritual strategies at work, but most of us just fail to label these things for what they are. Such manipulative behavior is nothing more than a form of witchcraft. That Christianity must not deteriorate into a 21st century Western voodoo. Instead, we must be reinvigorated to walk as true Christians, submitted to God and willing to embrace anything He brings into our lives through faith in His omnipotent power and the perfect love that He has revealed through His Son, Jesus Christ. Look, friends, our call is to be separate. We're supposed to be different. We're not to be just like the world. We don't fit in. We're not supposed to fit in. If we fit in too well, we've just got to re-examine the outward evidence of our faith. God told Moses that He wanted the children of Israel to be different from the world. And it was with a purpose. He told them, I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourselves. You shall be holy, for I am holy. This command, it, it implicitly puts a burden on each believer to pursue holiness. We're supposed to be actively involved in the process. The command included the requirement to consecrate yourselves. This was a call to be set apart. Other translations declared it as a call to sanctify yourselves. The action informs us that we must separate ourselves. We must remove ourselves in a material way. We must not do what the unclean neighbors do. We must not watch what the unclean neighbors watch. We must not consume what they consume when mirroring their conduct would cast an impure reflection on the holiness of God. We do not want to cast God in the wrong light by living out our own darkness. Now look, we do not create our righteousness. We enjoy it as a gift from God. We do not receive credit for our righteousness. It is exclusively a work of God's grace. We do nothing to earn the title of righteous. You see, it was Jesus who was righteous, and it is His righteousness that is imputed to us. It's credited to us. But if we declare Jesus to be Lord of our life, then His righteousness must not be hidden. If He is not declared through our lives, He is not Lord of our lives. Mr. Businessman, is Jesus your Lord? Is He directing your steps or does He merely provide an introduction to clients that do business with Christians? Is Jesus your Lord leading you into fulfilling the call on your life or is He merely a bumper sticker on 
the vehicle transporting you to achieve the goals that you have chosen independently of His will. Precious Mother, is Jesus your Lord nourishing your family? Or is He just a life jacket you keep in the closet for those sinking moments when your plan is failing? Mr. Preacher, is Jesus your Lord or merely words in your mantra? My friends, we are the church. We are His voice to tell the lost. We are His hands to help the downtrodden. We are His heart to comfort the wounded. Jesus is coming soon. Who shall we tell? Who shall we ignore? The goal should be to tell everyone and leave no one untouched by His love. I know this is not completely realistic because it's such an enormous task, but it should be our goal. I know we can't do much alone, but we can do many things together. Of course, that is the reason we here at Crosstalk have expanded this outreach to, to touch lives in many areas of the world. It is not enough to preach or to teach. We must also reach. There are activities underway that I want you to learn about, and some will be discussed in these programs. But since everyone sees what is happening in the world, I, I must talk about a prophetic book of the Bible. Some of my friends know that I don't often preach from the book of the Revelation, and I promise to do so right here today. The mission of Today with God is to spread the gospel around the world. Thousands of lives have already been touched by the love of Jesus through this Bible video project, but so many more need to see, hear, and understand the love of God. And that is why we translated this project into the top 11 languages of India. Countless of millions of more souls now have access to these Bible films in their native tongue. But we need God's help and your help. That comes through prayer. Will you join us on this humbling journey and pray that we can complete this enormous task? Our team is in India where over a hundred pastors have been trained to distribute the Today with God project to the nation. But hundreds more and even thousands more need the training and the tools to go forward. We need God and we need your prayers. Now more than ever, the Word of God must be seen. That is why Today with God exists in the native languages of the nation of India. Most importantly, that is why we are excited to announce the launch of our Today with God mobile app. It's coming soon and we want to bring it to your language. We have a team already working on developing this for worldwide use. It is our goal to distribute Today with God in as many languages as possible. This is no easy task, and that is why I want to ask you to pray for us. Scan the QR code to let us know you're praying with us, and we'll bless you with a free gift to show our gratitude. We thank you in advance for your prayers. So the book of the Revelation is sort of a scary book. I guess you might say it's on the minds of many people because there's so much bad news in the world. And like I've said, the bad news is the good news. Frankly, much of the exposition that I've heard on this last famous book of the Bible has been a stretch. It often goes from the squirrely to the just plain unbelievable. I don't mean to be unkind. I just don't buy some of the things preached about the Revelation. Of course, I believe every word written in the book, and I read it with great anticipation. But man, I got to tell you, it is a strange book. Perhaps I shouldn't be the preacher to admit this, but am I the only guy who wrestles with the book? It seems so many people have so many opinions about the book of the Revelation that some of them just must be wrong. Of course, I guess some of them must be right, too. 
The problem is how are we to know the difference? Do we lean toward views that make us comfortable? Do we stand with the guys who say the things that prop up the end time views we support? I know this is a natural tendency when studying awkward, complex, troublesome prophecies. Yet personally, I think it is wise to interpret things that are obvious in obvious ways and leave room for questions about the uncertainties. In the end, we are stewards of the mysteries of God, and some of these things at this time remain mysteries, but some of these things are unfolding before our very eyes. And it is amazing how the Lord clarifies mysteries in His time as we keep praying and reading. And when it comes to end time matters, I tend to keep my opinions about the unknown to myself. It gives me more time to teach about that, about which I'm certain of. And I sort of leave the curious suppositions to others. I prefer to focus on the unchangeable, imperative aspects of our faith that contain the life and death consequences of how we understand the person of Jesus. And although I can't predict the day of His return, the condition of the world and the circumstances in the Middle East confirm my beliefs that He is coming, and I believe He is coming soon, and I share that blessed hope broadly. Now, people know that end time speculation can be fun and profitable if you churn out books with interesting interpretations about the Bible predictions. But I choose to avoid the speculative so that I can promote that which is certain. Jesus died for my sins. He changed my life, and He's still changing lives today. And someday soon, He will return. I want you to know that I am always blessed when I read the last book of the Bible. Today, I want to share some of these blessings. This is a promise from God. Some folks are afraid to read the Revelation because they misunderstand the impact of this book or find the imagery to be troublesome. It should carry an R rating for violence, and it can be a very scary book. But the prophecy will be fulfilled, and it may begin very soon in a community near you. So I encourage you to read the book to know what to expect and hear what I'm about to tell you. You see, God tells us that blessings await those who read this apocalyptic text. In the third verse of chapter 1, it says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And that's the truth. A blessing awaits those who read it and who hear it. And I certainly believe that the time is at hand. <music>